Today we're going to install Mac OS on a virtual machine. I'm going to be using Linux for this. You can use any flavor of Linux. It doesn't matter. You can use Arch, Debian, whatever. Uh, and I wanted to just kind of jump right in, show you the project. I will be using the assistance of a Git project because it makes this so much easier and simple that we could probably get this under 10 minutes for the install. So with that said, let's get on the desktop and get right into it. All right, on our desktop, we'll go right to this GitHub page, simple KVM, getting started. Pick whatever flavor of Linux you have. This computer's on Arch, so we'll go ahead and grab the Arch line. We'll copy that in, open up our terminal, paste it, and enter. This will go ahead, install all these programs for you. Uh, I'll go ahead and say no, because I've already installed these, but you, you get all your dependencies finished. Now with that done, we can actually go into the actual starting up. Now you typically would want to add like a KVM group and libvert group and all these other things. It makes it a bit more complex to manage the permissions of this. So for this exercise, uh, obviously I wouldn't do this in production, but for those just learning, I find it better to go ahead and switch user to root and running as root, go to the var lib libvert and then images folder we're going to be working directly out of here today as this is already stock in every single virtual machine manager and it's just really easy to work with but if you still get permissions issues it's probably something to deal with se linux for you fedora users or an app armor permission for debian ubuntu based with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and start this project up. We'll copy this and we're going to clone the entire thing into the images directory. And I hear the collective cringing for all you sysadmins out there running as root doing this. Now, when we're cloning this, we'll just go ahead, do a space and put dot. This is going to clone it directly to the root of this images folder. And we'll do a listing and you can see all the, like a couple images in here the reason why we do that is we're going to be accessing some files right here if we look over you'll see esp this is kind of like a boot partition <laughs> but we're going to be using that uh, when we do the actual full step two setup or the actual jump start here which we'll go ahead and start downloading and we'll go ahead and do catalina today uh, we have options for high sierra mojave or catalina but this is going to download the base system image from Apple directly. There's no downloading from some unauthorized third party source. And that DMG file is also an image. So you can see we're working with a lot of images. That's why I'm working out of this folder. And it'll just make it a lot easier when we go to the graphic user interface. Now, if you were just launching all this directly from terminal, you could probably put this in your home folder and be okay. Uh, however, I really like to use Vert Manager and some other aspects of this. And there we go. You can see it actually did a little conversion, DMG to 2EMG. It actually changed this to an image file. So uh, our virtualization can actually look at it. Pretty cool that it just does all this automatically for you. Now we'll just copy and paste the next commands. We're going to go ahead and create uh, our disk right here. So we'll go ahead and create my disk. And that's done. And now we're just going to add this line to the end of basic.sh. You can use any text editor here. If you're not familiar with many text editors, you could do like a graphic editor, like gedit, and just do like gedit basic. And then just come all the way at the bottom here, and then just simply paste our command in. And that's it. We're just adding these two lines. So we'll save this out, close it. And we're pretty much done with this section for the basic edit. And now we just run it. So again, we'll just do basic.sh. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and move some of this off screen so we can easily look at everything. All right, the very first thing we need to do is format that disk we created. So we'll go into disk utility and hit continue. From here, usually it's the top disk. Just make sure it matches over here. You can see it's about 65 gigs. We'll hit erase. And we'll just call this uh, my disk and erase. Only takes a couple seconds. Close this. And now we just install Mac OS. And continue. 
And then we just accept uh, the software license agreement, basically saying, hey, we're turning over our firstborn and all our privacy to Apple. Sounds like a good plan. We'll go ahead and select our disk and hit install. Now we just let it wait. Usually this takes about 30 minutes. This is a rather fast machine that I'm on right now, so it might take a little bit less. For you, it may take about an hour or two. It just depends on the machine you're installing this on. So with that said, I'll see you on the flip side. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward time. Okay, after install and reboot, uh, it's stuck here. Now, I've done this a couple other times, and I actually got stuck here as well whenever I was doing Catalina. Uh, to get around this, what I've been doing is just holding Control-Alt and pressing G. This releases your mouse cursor. Coming up to machine, hitting reset. This will be presented with the boot screen after it reboots here. From here, usually I just do a pre-booter, and then from here it should actually boot all the way in. We're going to go ahead and do the pre-booter. The pre-booter might also be needed for updates and those types of things. However, it just kind of as a whole fallback. If it fails to boot, usually I use this as a backup. And now it kind of goes through the finalizing of the installation process one more time. Uh, it says 30 minutes, but in my practice, it usually only takes a couple minutes really to get through all this. About usually about 20 minutes in my case. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and speed through the final finalizing of our install here. Just pop right on the screen, and I'm just going to go ahead and finish this out, and I'll see you right on the desktop. Here we are on the desktop. Everything looks as you would imagine on a Mac. Uh, there is no hardware acceleration. That's one thing that you will notice with a stock VM. Now you can do other things such as uh, do PCI pass through and really emulate. So if you needed like Final Cut Pro or something like that, you totally can do that on this uh, VM. Just know though, when you get into those types of things, you do need a dedicated video card specifically for this VM if you want to go that route. Having said that, uh, we can easily relaunch this just by running that script, that uh, basic.sh script. However, I wanted to do it directly from vert manager so let's set that up real fast i'm just going to finish shutting this machine down and again Control alt g will release your mouse you could also shut it down and power it down that way as well now from here let's go ahead and launch into here type vert manager and this is where you would install vert manager obviously i've already installed it so we don't really need that now, before we launch Vert Manager, we do need to run one more thing from our directory. We're just going to do a direct make and add just like this dot forward slash make dot sh dot add and we'll hit enter. Now I'll say, hey, this has been defined in the template dot XML. Everything's gravy. We're set. Now, one thing I will say, if you do run into errors here, pay close attention to them. If you see an error uh, about uh, a problem typically what it is is you need to do what's called a pseudo system control enable and then you want lib vert d uh, that would show you what the status of this file is if you don't have this enabled or if it's not active and loaded you're going to have problems uh, just want to go ahead and throw that out there that's a common problem for a new virtual machine user but with all this done, we can now quit out and launch into our vert manager. So we'll go ahead and just launch vert manager, sign in, and you'll see we have it right here. We can simply just go right click and run, and it should load. If you do get an error, make sure you are paying attention to that error. So from the default here, let's see what we get, Mac OS install. This is actually not correct because it says Mac OS install from base system. We've already installed this. So let's go ahead and shut this down. We're just going to go ahead and quit out. And this time around, we're just going to stop this. I'm just going to go ahead and for force it off. And we're going to hit open again. And then I'll minimize this, this screen. We need to modify this a little bit as we see the disks that we're using, ESP and base system. We don't actually have our regular booting disks, so we need to add that. We'll go ahead and say add, storage, select, manage. And you notice how it just pulled all this up. That's why we did this install as root in this directory so we could easily access uh, our disks. So we're gonna choose this volume and we're gonna want to probably boot from that. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna add this in 
and we'll go ahead and start it up, see what we get, and come back to our graphic console. Now we're talking. We got our pre-boot, and then we also have boot Mac OS for my disk. Let's try this one. I prefer to use this one. However, if you update or you have issues, you probably want to come back to the pre-boot. So we'll go ahead and select Mac OS. So this is our Mac OS desktop. You can emulate, you can do a lot of things with this base one without hardware acceleration. However, if you're using Mac OS apps and it says, hey, metal is required, just know that means it needs hardware acceleration and this probably would not be suitable for that. And that is Mac OS virtualization in a nutshell on Linux. I really enjoy this style of just using it for like a Hackintosh. Because using the Hackintosh routine, while I've done a 30 minute video, again, I'll link that up here, where it goes how to install it on bare metal and get hardware acceleration, those types of things, for those AMD graphics card users, you can do that. But it, it's still not a great experience. So that's why I wanted to show the virtual machine route. Because a lot of times people using Macs really just need one or two things where there's certain things they use their Mac for. And this might get you out to where you might be on Linux and you're like, oh crap, you know what? Instead of actually having to go like get a MacBook or whatnot, I just need this one application. This would be fantastic for it. A lot of new Linux users coming from Windows have a Windows VM also set up so they can just jump in the Windows VM and load up like Adobe Acrobat or something like that and do their edits and then jump out. Just kind of want to get your mind rolling on this. I didn't want to jump too much into the PCI pass-through portion because it's very complex. I have done an entire playlist, which I'll link up here. You can follow that along. It uses a lot of the same functions of here, and you can use that to pass through it to your Mac as well. Uh, also, so I'll leave links in the description for that GitHub I was using. They also have a PCI pass-through guide on there. And yeah, hopefully this opens your mind a bit. I love it. It's great. It's easy, and I think uh, pretty much any uh, Linux user probably can get around that knows his way around Terminal could easily or knows her way around Terminal could easily do this. And with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Drop a like if you want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you in the next one.